Hello my young friends. I am Javashri Ghosh, teacher in Demonstration Multipurpose School, Bhuvaneshwar. I am back here with you all. I welcome you all to my science class. Children, in our earlier classes, we have done matter in our surroundings. Part 1. I hope you enjoyed the class. I am here again with the second part with few more concepts. Children, as I told you, you might have studied the lesson and done your task. Today, let's start with some new concepts. And children, be ready with your notebooks and pens. Here we go. Before going to the new concepts, let us have some recapitulation. We had studied about constituents of matter, properties of particles of matter, classification of matter on basis of their spacing and energy of particles. I hope you remember all these things. We had also discussed some new uh, definitions of wordings. Those were rigidity. It is the property of a substance to continue to remain in its shape when treated with an external force. Compressibility. It is the property of the particles to contract its inter-particle space when exposed to an external force, thereby increasing its density. Children, we had talked about this by using a sponge. You remember, I think? Few more things are, we had discussed about fluidity. It is the ability of a substance to flow or move about freely. Children, do you remember I had poured sugar in a container? It was flowing, but is sugar a uh, liquid or gas? Think, no. Filling the gas container. The particles in a container take a shape as they randomly vibrate in all possible directions. We had filled the balloons with the gas and it took the shape of the balloon. One was heart shaped, one was oval shaped. I hope you remember this. Then comes kinetic energy. Motion allows particles to possess energy which is referred to as kinetic energy. The increasing order of the kinetic energy possessed by various states of matter are Gases have largest kinetic energy. The particles of liquid, they are more than the particles of liquid. And particles of liquid possess kinetic energy which is more than the solid. Solid particles have less kinetic energy compared to liquid and gases. What is density? It is the mass of a unit volume of substance. It is expressed as D is equal to m by v, small d, density, small m, mass and capital V here is volume. Children, I think now you can have recollected these things. So, let's move to the next concept. Children, today I am going to talk about change of state of matter. You have known about the state of matter, solid, liquid, gaseous state, is not it? So, and these state of matters are interchangeable. Let's see how. Solid state to liquid state, okay, on heating. Then liquid state to gaseous state, again on heating. But when we come from the gaseous state to the liquid state, it is to be cool. And from liquid state to solid state. Again cooling. You can also see the picture over here. Ice is being melted into water. Water is being evaporated on warming or heating. Then from the gaseous state, we go for condensation. Then from liquid state, also we go for freezing or solidification. For doing or interchanging the states, certain factors are responsible. And what are these factors? The important factors are temperature and pressure, which help in change of state of matter. Children, now we are going to start with 
effect of change of temperature. What is the effect of temperature on the change of state of matter? As we have discussed children, with the rise in temperature, the kinetic energy of the particles also increase. That is, the speed of the particles of matter also increase. And you know very well, when the speed increases, what happens? They move here and there randomly. And the closely packed particles, they move apart. If it is solid, then with random motion of the particles, they are able to break the force of attraction between the particles. They become quite free. And in liquids, what happens? They are nearly closely packed. And when temperature rises, they come to the gaseous state. Okay, children? Now, some concepts and some definitions. Temperature at which solid melts to become a liquid at normal atmospheric pressure is called its melting point. Melting point is that point where the temperature at which solid is converted into liquid state. Okay. Similarly, when a liquid is converted into solid state at that particular temperature is known as boiling point. The temperature at which liquid changes to gas at normal atmospheric pressure is called its boiling point. Okay, children, <coughs> we'll be using these terms. <coughs> Sorry. Change of solid state to liquid state is termed as melting as well as fusion. See here in the figure, you can very well see the change of solid state to liquid state on heating. It is melting or fusion. Change of liquid state to solid state is also called as freezing or solidification. And this is done by cooling. Solid to liquid on heating, melting fusion. Liquid to solid on cooling, it is freezing or solidification. Change of liquid state to gaseous state is called as vaporization. And that is done by heating. Change of gaseous state to liquid state is called condensation and that is done by cooling. You can see the flowchart. Liquid to gas on heating, then gas to liquid on cooling. Okay, children? Now, since ice, water and vapor, we are used to these things because it's three states we are used to see every day. Let's uh, go for some examples like melting point of ice is 0 degree centigrade. That is, ice starts melting at 0 degree centigrade. Water starts boiling at 100 degree centigrade. That is, boiling point of water is 100 degree centigrade. Uh, units of measuring the temperature are centigrade or Celsius. We call it degree C. Kelvin, we just uh, write it as capital K, no degree here. Fahrenheit, and we write degree Fahrenheit. Children, let's learn the interconversion of these scales. Conversion of temperature scale. Temperature in degree centigrade, when added to 273, will give you temperature in Kelvin scale. Okay, suppose example, melting point of ice is 0 degree centigrade. Just simple to convert it into Kelvin scale. What we do? 0 plus 273, it is 273 Kelvin. Similarly, boiling point of water is 100 degree centigrade. When we are converting it to Kelvin scale, what do we do? Just add 273. 100 plus 273, it becomes 373 Kelvin. Okay? Then conversion to the Fahrenheit scale. 9 by 5 multiplied by the temperature at uh, in centigrade plus 32 will give you temperature in Fahrenheit scale. Uh, let's see for the example. Melting point of ice is what? 0. So 9 by 5 into 0 plus 32. 
it will give 0 plus 32, 32 degree Fahrenheit. Similarly, you can also try with 100 degree centigrade and we get 212 degree Fahrenheit. Children, now let's see and discuss what will happen when we heat ice. Children, I've got some ice cubes for you, but it has nearly melted. See here, I've got a thermometer. This thermometer is quite different from the usual one which you use at home. That is the clinical thermometer in degree Fahrenheit. And this is, is a laboratory thermometer that we use in the laboratories. Here it has reading from minus 10 to 200 degree centigrade. Its measure is in degree centigrade. Since it was dipped in ice, the temperature now shows 0 degree centigrade. Children, ice has come to 0 degree centigrade and it has start melting. You can see from the figure as shown on your screen, we have this sort of arrangement to make some readings or take some readings and explanations. Children, let me explain you all these things on board. This is a beaker, ice and thermometer. Suppose this is a beaker children. Ice cubes are here. Okay. Now you have a thermometer being inserted over here. I have a glass rod. As you can see in the picture. This glass rod helps in stirring. Okay. Now thermometer shows a reading and here first let me draw a graph to explain you this. On this graph let me take time in minutes and temperature in degree centigrade. Okay. In y axis we take temperature and on x axis let me write the time. Suppose this is 1 minute, 2 minutes, 3 minutes, 4 minutes, 5 minutes, 6 minutes and this way it goes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10. Suppose I start from minus 5, here 0, here 5, 10, 15, this way I take up to 100 degrees centigrade. Okay children, now what happens? Initially, ice is at, suppose at minus 5 degrees centigrade. Here ice is at minus 5 degrees centigrade. Okay, now I will be stirring this ice. Now the temperature reading will rise. When I stir this ice, temperature reading will rise. And on rising, it comes up to 0 degree centigrade after 2 minutes. After 2 minutes, the temperature will be rising in the thermometer. How? We will be providing heat. How does it rise? We will be providing heat to ice. Okay. When it is being heated, we see a rise in temperature from minus 5 degree centigrade. Suppose... Uh, this is a minus 5, it is, this is 0, uh, let me take minus 10. Huh. Ice at minus 10 degree centigrade will rise up to 0 degree centigrade. Okay, and you can see the difference in this here also in the thermometer. But children, one thing happens when it reaches 0 degree centigrade, you will find that there is no rise in temperature. Means, you know, the temperature for a few minutes, say up to two to three minutes, what happens? It doesn't rise. There is no rise in temperature. Why? Why this happens? We have been stirring it continuously. We have been providing it heat. The heat which had been provided to the particles of ice they first from minus 5 degree centigrade to 0 degree centigrade rises there and it is being shown in the thermometer. But after that we are 
providing the heat continuously. But there is no rise in temperature in the thermometer. Where did this heat go? Has it vanished? No. See your children. The particles previously, the heat which is provided increases the kinetic energy of the particles. We know that with the rise in temperature, the kinetic energy of the particles increase. Here also, the kinetic energy of the particles of ice goes on increasing. When the kinetic energy increases, what happens? The particles move here and there with greater speed. Okay, and that is being depicted on the temperature scale that is your thermometer. Now, after when it has reached this 0 degree centigrade, what happens? You see, there is no rise in temperature. We don't see. It is static at 0 degree centigrade. Here you can see in the thermometer, it is still at 0 degree centigrade. It has not risen. Why this happens? We are providing it. Where did this heat go? Children, this amount of extra amount of heat, what it is doing? It is not showing in the temperature. What work it is doing? Apart from increasing the kinetic energy, the amount of heat which is provided that helps the particles to overcome the force of attraction between these particles. That extra amount of heat which is given that helps in overcoming the force of attraction between these particles. Now children, ice starts melting into water. What happens? These ice at 0 degree centigrade starts melting into water. At 0 degree centigrade, this is the melting point of ice. Okay, this is melting point of ice. Ice starts melting into water and reading on thermometer is static. The amount of heat which is continuously being provided, apart from increasing the kinetic energy, it is hidden in these particles of water. Okay, that amount of heat is known as latent heat. That is known as latent heat. Children, latent heat means hidden. Latent means hidden. This is the hidden heat. Okay. So, now at 0 degree centigrade, two states of matter are coexisting. What is that? Ice as well as water. At 0 degree centigrade, children, you see at ice and water. Both are there here at 0 degree centigrade and it will remain in that condition and there is no rise in temperature till all the ice is melted into water. This happens till all the ice particles they are melted into water. One thing I want to discuss with you children at 0 degree centigrade it exists in ice form that is solid form as well as in liquid form. Now just guess, at 0 degree centigrade, that is at melting point of ice, which has got more energy, the particles of ice or particles of water, which has got more energy. Particles of ice here has kinetic energy, okay, but particles of water Apart from kinetic energy, it has some hidden energy that is latent heat. Okay? And this is called the latent heat of fusion. Why fusion at melting? This is latent heat due to melting. This is also known as latent heat of fusion. And especially in a particular case, this is ice. At 0 degree centigrade, water has more energy than ice. Okay, so which is cooler? So which is cooler among these? Of course, ice. Ice is cooler because ice has less energy. Okay, children. Now, a time will come 
when all the ice particles will get converted into water. Then after that what happens you know? Again the heat is being continuously provided. Again you will find there is increase in the temperature after few minutes and the temperature increases increases up to 100 degree centigrade. Why 100 degree centigrade? Because at 100 degree centigrade what happens? Water starts boiling. Here it has come to the what, uh, liquid state then it starts boiling because heat is being provided continuously. And this is the boiling point of water. This is 100 degree centigrade. What happens at this boiling point? At this boiling point water and vapor both the states coexist means water is being converted into steam vapor you, you can say a gaseous state so from liquid state it is being converted into the gaseous state and this happens at boiling point and one more thing again it happens at the boiling point you find that the temperature reading on this thermometer is static. Means it is at 100 degree only. It doesn't rise. Why this happens again? Because the amount of heat which is provided to water increases the kinetic energy. Apart from doing that, it also is used for overcoming the force of attraction of the particles in water and convert it into which state? Gaseous state that is to steam. Here water and steam both coexist. At 100 degree centigrade both water and steam coexist that is the liquid state as well as the vapor state. Now children as we had discussed here now tell me water at 100 degree centigrade and steam at 100 degree centigrade which has got more energy water at 100 degree centigrade has which energy yes it is kinetic energy and steam at 100 degree centigrade what it has it has kinetic energy plus again the latent heat okay and it is known as latent heat of vaporization latent heat of vaporization is used to convert water from steam okay children so steam has got more energy kinetic energy as well as the hidden energy that is the latent heat of vaporization. So which is more dangerous? Which is more hot? Of course steam is not it. Children let me tell you once again ice at 0 degree centigrade has less energy but steam at 100 degree centigrade has more energy. I think you have got what no, my point what I want to tell you at 0 degree centigrade solid and liquid state coexist at 100 degree centigrade the liquid and vapor state coexist hope you have got something into your mind see here children Now in this graph also what I had done roughly you can see here proper. See in this graph up to 0 degree centigrade there is rise in temperature then at melting point it remains static then again it rises up to the boiling point that is 100 degree centigrade then it stops till all the water particles are converted into steam. Okay. Now let us go for the formal definition of latent heat of fusion. The amount of heat energy that is required to change 1 kg of solid into liquid at atmospheric pressure at its melting point is known as 
Latin heat of fusion. Latin heat of fusion of ice is 3.34 into 10 to the power 5 joules per kg. Joules is the unit for energy. And uh, this value 3.34 you might find some little variation in other books. It may be 3.35 or something. Okay. Particles of water at 0 degree centigrade have much energy compared to particles of ice at same temperature as we had discussed. This is latent heat of vaporization. The amount of heat energy that is required to change 1 kg of liquid into gas at atmospheric pressure at its boiling point is known as latent heat of Vaporization. Latent heat of vaporization of water is 22.5 into 10 to the power 5 joules per kg. In some books, you may find 22.5 or 6 or 5, 6 something. Uh, particles of steam at 100 degrees centigrade have more energy compared to particles of water at same temperature. You know why? I have discussed this, children. It has got more energy because it has got latent heat. Children, state of matter is due to the difference in the distances between the constituent particles. We have discussed that and you know this. What will happen when we start putting pressure and compress a gas closed and closed in a cylinder? Will the particle come closer? Will there be any change in the state of matter? by increasing or decreasing the pressure. See the picture over here, when the picture is low and when it is high. Look at the picture and think of the answers for the questions mentioned above. Just let your brain juice it. Now children, let's discuss the next part, the effect of change of pressure. You can see from the picture, when the Pressure keeps on increasing. What happens to the particles over here? The physical state of a substance can be changed by changing the pressure. By increasing the pressure, the particles of matter come closer. The force of attraction between the particles of matter increases with the increase in pressure. You can see when we keep on pressing the piston, what happens first in the gaseous state? It is the particles are moving you know um, they have space lots of space between them but in case of liquid what happens the space decreases in case of solid it is very much compressed increasing the pressure and decreasing the temperature gases can be liquefied example you are seeing it in a daily life the lpg cng gases are compressed and stored in cylinders as liquid Solid carbon dioxide, we call it dry ice, is obtained when carbon dioxide is compressed to a high pressure. So pressure and temperature determine the state of matter. Children, now can you suggest a method to liquefy atmospheric gases? It's your task. Now, children, let's go to a Another concept, what is sublimation? You might have seen that uh, something just vanishes. When you put the naphthalene balls in your closet, what happens? After some days, you open it. You don't find any liquid or remains of that. You just have the odor of that. It's not, where did it go? Did it vanish in your closet? No. It just got changed into what? Vapor state without being coming into the liquid state. This is what is sublimation. On application of heat, particles of some solids directly gets converted into gaseous without changing into liquid state and vice versa. Means from solid state, they can be converted into the liquid state, uh, sorry, gaseous state as you are seeing in this picture on application of heat. Then again on cooling it, we can get back the solid. Here in the picture you see camphor is being heated and you get the gas. 
and here what happens if you collect the gas and cool it we get the camphor back okay this is what is sublimation some other examples of sublimation are ammonium chloride camphor solid carbon dioxide iodine all these things children i will show you something okay how this sublimation takes place let me take some ammonium chloride in a dish okay as you know children ammonium chloride is sublime now i have taken in a dish and i am going to heat it on a burner see here it is being put on a burner i want to heat it now let me cover it with an inverted funnel let me cover it with an inverted funnel and i will plug the stem of the funnel with a cotton wool why because the vapor which is coming it won't go out or escape children you might be seeing some white fumes over there see some white fumes are coming and you can see very well it is not been converted into the liquid state directly from the solid ammonium chloride you are getting the fumes of ammonium chloride see here directly it has been converted into gaseous state on application of heat so children we have discussed till now about change of state of matter and sublimation also it is also a change directly from the solid to vapor state and vapor to solid without coming to the liquid state okay uh, the main concepts here we have discussed the latent heat of fusion of ice and latent heat of vaporization okay these are quite important uh, concepts children please go through your book also for knowing more about it you can understand it very well for today's uh, task i've got some questions for you these are quite easy please do it in your notebooks today's task is what produces more severe burns boiling water or steam that i have discussed i think you know this naphthalene balls disappear with time without leaving any solid why please note it down in your notebook convert the temperature 300 kelvin to centigrade and fahrenheit scale we have discussed this i hope you can do it what is the physical state of water at 100 degree centigrade what happens to the melting point of ice when pressure is increased these are few questions children try to do it and for this you have to go through the notes as well as the book children this is for today next we'll meet some other day for the rest of the concepts that is there in this chapter so bye for today take care children take care of yourself and take care of elders stay at home and be safe Thank you.